another thing that's um, I think I've heard a fair amount of interest in is uh, really retention of of existing uh, tenants, if you will. And do you guys look at um, like propensity to leave models or some sort of uh, renewal type of data that's interesting? That would be good to know. It's like you're it's like you're living in my brain. We actually so about um, 25 of my team members are renewal specialists. And so their job is to hold a portfolio of communities and and work with retention and renewals for just our residents that already live there. And so they have their own dashboards. They have their own trackers that that we've built that that maintain this um, information. And and, um, you know, historically, renewals, we've just expected them to come and we've been okay with the 50 percent retention rate. And. Um, it's just kind of been the way that it is. And it, it feels very much like we give 50% of our rent roll, 90% of our attention, right? And that's those folks coming in the door. And the other 50% of our rent roll get that other 10% of our attention, which is that letter um, 90 days before their lease expires. And we hope you renew it. And if you don't, we'll just release it and, and our attention's over here. And so we have moved our attention, right? So that we're, we're giving a large amount of attention back to those residents who live with us now. And um, being available for and um, um, talking to and sending letters out and getting information on those particular residents and um, putting time and energy into researching what that market is doing and what renewals are doing in that market and what direction they're moving in and what could our retention rate be. And so um, we have seen improvements to both um, renewal rates and renewal retention um, just by, by putting the focus on it that it truly deserves. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's come out of the market is this idea that um, obviously people are, are now working more remotely and working from their apartments more often than not, and also taking on potentially jobs that were maybe out of state jobs making more revenue. Are you able to, um, are you guys at the level, I guess, where you're we're trying to find out on those potential renewals, has their income changed dramatically enough or has the incomes in that area changed dramatically enough that... Um, you know, the, the, like the actual renewal should be higher than what you're looking at normally. Um, or, you know, they obviously have more money to spend. That's been really at the, at the forefront of all of our discussions because we want to be sure that for our clients, we're getting the full value of the home, right, from, for rent. Um, we also want to be very careful that we're not pushing people out or putting them in a bad position where we're asking them to pay a rent that they're not able to pay, right? We have people who've lived in these homes for 10, 12 years. They weren't qualified since they put in their application 10, 12 years ago. So we want to be very aware of both of those sides of the conversation as we're doing renewals. And so we have been paying very close attention to what um, what pay scales have been doing, what income has been doing, um, using that income data to talk about um, what should we be getting on renewals here? If we're seeing that income is doing X, then, then we want to ask for Y for sure. Um, but we don't want to push people so far that we end up in a bad place six months from now. And so um, being, you know, keeping a really close eye on that income um, data has really helped us play in our sandbox on um, what is the right thing to do for both the client and the resident and the property, right? What is going to actually optimize our rent, optimize our retention ratio, and um, um, do the, the, the best, build the best possible strategy for that client. That is a key piece of it how you spend marketing dollars on attracting new tenants to to a residence. Um, are you leveraging data, whether it be listing activity or whatever it is, um, or you know, new in- employment growth? Uh, how do you kind of decide where best to spend? Yeah, oh gosh, all the things, right? And so we actually have uh, performance advisors um, that work as, um, so it's a, a marriage of a revenue manager and a regional marketing specialist have come together to form what we call a performance advisor. And our performance advisors actually advise on on that exact thing by property. So by asset, they're talking about what's best for you specifically to do, and they're using data to do that. So their whole job is to take all of the data that we collect and to um, look at the numbers, to evaluate the numbers, to evaluate the numbers based on that particular community, that community's strategies and goals, and um, you know all the things, the class, the location, all of that, and then say, here's, here's based on the data, what is a good decision for you to make to spend your marketing dollars? Um, just the way revenue managers have been doing that on pricing for you know years now, um, we are also doing that with, with the marketing. 
as someone who's building dashboards for users, how does that how does that work for you in terms of coexisting with the need to get data out easily into Excel and as well as what you're building? I mean, so you're obviously building an infrastructure that they can go back to and you're probably having to configure and customize it. But in the, the day, you've got people who just want to get their data out and look at it and mess around with it on their own. Is that is that kind of how you guys are building things? Yeah, we're building it so that everybody has access to pull it and do um, and slice and dice it on their own, right? They can pull the data, export it into Excel and move it around however they want. One of the, um, um, within our BI tool, we don't also, we do not also build reports, right? It's a visualization tool. Um, what we did want to be able, we did want our team members to be able to do and our clients to be able to do is to take that data and use it, right? It's it's important. It's data. It's it's what we're basing our decisions on. And so if the dashboard wasn't specifically built in the way that you wanted to look at that number, here's the number. You can move it around to however you wanted to look at it. And so um, I do think that it's really important that everybody have access to that on demand. So that they can begin to pull their own numbers and make those decisions based on the way that they want to look at those numbers.